This is Terry McDade, aka the Pirate Hunter, and this is an inbox kit review of Verlinden's production Confederate 10 inch Columbide figure included kit 1593 in 54 millimeter or 132nd scale. This is out of their North and South collection, I guess. Uh, I'm just doing some Civil War and just starting to get into them a little bit. The box is just basically white. It's got the label on the front. 1593 written on the side and that's about it. Comes pretty well wrapped. I've been into it a couple times. Comes with your directions. Comes with a bag of all your resin parts. Comes with a resin base. And it comes with another bag with resin in it also. Your resin base is in a has a wood grain type pattern on it. You can see where it's got the lines for the different side the wooden boards that are in there on it. It has the metal ring that the cannon rotated on. Some of these, from what I've read, could only rotate 180 degrees, but this one apparently can rotate 360. has a hole in the center that, I guess, where the pivot point for the cannon goes down in. It is a very thick, heavy resin. Uh, it needs to be done on a sanding block to smooth all the sharp edges off, get it down a little more level. It's got some pretty good detail in the wood. You can always take and make the grooves bigger with either a pin and a pin vise or a back edge of a knife, something like that, to make them a little bit bigger, a little deeper. Put some more pattern in the wood, then you can weather it, and color it, stain it. Now, these two here and this, they have a little bit of flash on them, but this is your rails that the cannon sets on and slides on. They set, there's two of them go on to the base. Uh, they have a little bit of flash on them, not much. They're pretty pretty straight, a little tiny bow in them, but nothing to get excited about, nothing on the resin. It's smooth. It'll just, also it'll just pop off or pull off. A little bit with a knife will have it totally gone. You have to be careful with this because what I found, if you get one of these, some of the parts that's supposed to be in that bag that are wheels in this, I found in the different uh, pieces of plastic. Somehow they either didn't get put in the bag or they were attached to this when they were put on there. And I just found another one and I've had this, uh, been into these parts three times now and another one just come off of out of this bubble wrap. So if you get one of these kits, be exceedingly careful with that. Present parts. You have another section of the rails that the cannon is on. You have the cannon itself. Uh, it's got the block that's got to be cut off the back. It is drilled on the end, so it is open. Some of these, from what I've read, they put a steel wrap around the back of them and they thread, uh, they put lands and grooves in them uh, later after the war or during the war. But this is uh, being done as a Confederate one and this is the way it looked. This one I'm doing, the pictures I've got are uh, outside of New Orleans during the Civil War and the one cannon there was called the demoralizer by the Union troops apparently because of all the damage it caused. We have another piece of the cannon. Now it's got the casting block on it. Different pieces of the framework for the cannon. They've got, you know, I said cannon block uh, blocks on them, no big thing. Another, this and these blocks here, that one's got a void in it, will probably have to be filled, but that's you know, minor, no big thing on it. Comes with the barrels, and it's got something in the top. I 
don't know. This is going to have to be cut also. I don't know. It kind of looks like a pan or a uh, pot, something like that down in there. Comes with these two barrels. This one has got, uh, they both got lids on them. So I don't know. You can just use them for whatever on it. This is another one of the blocks, and these are all in different heights. And what they are is so the cannon, the cannon set on this, so when it fired, the main rails were inclined. So as the cannon fired, it would try to roll up the inclined rails and then back down again. This is the rings that holds the cannon into the top of this portion of the framework for it. They're very thin and they're cast with the locking nuts on, with the nuts on it. This is part of the adjustment system for raising and lowering the height of the cannon. Another block, uh, resin block for something on it. It comes with five cannonballs that are just about the right size just a little big to fit down in the cannon, but normally you rammed them down in there. Uh, comes with some more small parts. These, I don't know if, what they are. We'll find out on the directions. Comes with a bag of potatoes, which is kind of neat. Uh, it's a burlap bag with potatoes in it. Another part of the framework of the cannon where the cannon you have this portion these portions here glue onto this and then they set down into this and these locks wherever I did with them go over top of them to hold them in place on the cannon there's another bucket here that you would have to take and put some uh, take, pull you out a piece of sprue and heat it up and make you a handle for it or if you found some really thin little thread to go over it. These are parts of the handle that go into this handle to they use to raise and lower the elevation of the cannon. This part is part of the elevation system on the cannon. These are the legs of the body. I said this is a 132nd scale. There is not a lot of Silver War stuff out there. The detail on it's pretty good. The detail on the ja on the coat that he's wearing, it's got a pretty good amount of detail on that in the blanket that he's got wrapped around him. It's one of the arms and it looks like a haversack of some kind or uh, on it. We'll figure it out here in a minute. This is the end portion of the cannon. This block has to come off and this gets glued on and then you have part of it that fits into that with the spiral wheel that you take and use to raise and lower it. This is the feet in the head uh, the Civil War soldier that comes with it. It looks pretty good. It's got some pretty good detail on it. His rifle has got a pretty good amount of detail. These are what they use to rotate the cannon. They're great big long pry bars they use to rotate the cannon. These I don't know what they're for. A res the rod of some kind. I'll have to figure it, see if I can figure it out looking at it. I'm not a Civil War cannon expert, believe me. And these are wheels that go on it where it was mounted underneath these where they could take and they would rotate the cannon because it would set facing out, fire it, then they would rotate it around to reload it, then rotate it back on it. So let's look at the directions. Single sheet, Berlinden Productions, Inc. Uh, 
O'Fallon, Missouri, Confederate 10 inch Columbiad. On this, this is where you can see where all the parts go together on this and the different blocks. This, like I said, goes on the back of the cannon. It says uh, notice direction of notice direction of slot. This goes down in here. That sets down on that. That's got the four handles in it. The wheels. This is for uh, both sides. You have two on each side. On the way these blocks are in this, you can see because it raises it off this. It says note the difference between the three lower carriage cross members, which are what sets the elevation of this. It says notice note direction of stoppers. They set on this side and the other side. The stoppers are on the back. This says align wheels to fit ring on base. Uh, there's not much to this. Then you've got the diorama accessories that go on it. You've got the color picture to look at it to come up with how to paint some of the ideas to paint on it. All in all, it's another pretty simple kit. It's pretty heavy resin. Um, it'll go into a diorama that was uh, replicating where it would have been at the fort outside of New Orleans during the one of the two battles that were down there when the Union Army was trying to get past or did get past the Union Navy also. So another really short kit review. There's not much to review on this. There's really just not a lot there. It's a pretty good looking kit there, other than a lot of fl some flash, but it's it's not enough flash to get excited about. Um, it just most of it'll come off with your fingers on it. This even where these are attached, they're not attached that heavy and hard on it. So you end the back edge of a resin back edge of a exacto knife, scrape the resin or a needle in a pin vise might make it fairly easy to get down in there, or you can try to saw it however you want to do it. Again, these, you know, you saw these off. So there's not, said, not much to taking it apart, uh, cleaning it up, so a little bit of things. The detail's good on the bolts. Detail's pretty good on everything in here. So, like I said, it's a pretty neat kit. If you're into Civil War or trying to get into Civil War, you will find out there's not a lot out of there, out there for the Civil War buff to build. Uh, there's some figures, some cannons, uh, Union cannons, but this is for my son-in-law, and he wanted the Civil War cannon along with the review I did of General Armistead to do that for him. So, like I said, it's a pretty good kit. Be careful when you're unwrapping it, if you get it, because some of these parts were laying in the bubble wrap that you don't lose them out of there. So... This is Terry McDade, and as I always do, to quote the great Jerry Springer, take care of yourself and each other.